Okay, now 10. Alright, so this one just from low power looks like a severe keratosis. I see some pseudohornsis. Yeah. Um, I see some lymphocytes toward the bottom, so I think it's a little bit inflamed. Yes, agree, inflamed. So inflamed seb, next case, and I think actually that's exactly how I would sign this out in my report in practice. But the reason that it's here in uh, intermediate um, benign uh, epidermal session for you guys is is obviously something more than just that it's an inflamed seb. So is there any bonus that you found in here? Yeah, so it took me a while. There's kind of like those little glassy areas in ah, there. Good. And at first I was like, are those squamous eddies? But they don't have nuclei, like you mentioned earlier. Um, there's not really enough like atypia for me to at all consider squame for those to be like keratin pearls. So I think that's amyloid. I think maybe they've been kind of scratching at their sub. Um, so just like keratin-derived amyloid. Excellent job. This is keratin-derived amyloid, precisely like you said. What you have is that homogenized eosinophilic stuff with cracks, uh, little crack-like spaces there. And um, the, uh, the main thing is that you don't worry that about um, systemic amyloidosis like uh, uh, light chain amyloid. This is not light chain. This is keratin derived and keratinocyte derived. It's made of keratin and maybe some other proteins from the keratinocytes as they break down and fall into the dermis. And what's nice in this case is you can actually see that happening. These are basically the equivalent to like cytoid bodies, I think. I think they're very similar to cytoid bodies or individual dying keratinocytes that are kind of massing together and getting pushed down into the dermis. So you can see them individual ones here. You can see the same thing falling out here. And then they're all getting packed and compressed together. And so uh, this process can be seen in a variety of, of uh, benign and malignant um, uh, epidermal and keratinocyte derived lesions in the skin. You can see it under SEBS. You can see it, um, the most common place I see it is actually with basal cell carcinomas. You can see keratin derived amyloid around basal cells. Um, so the main way that you can tell, how do you know this is keratinocyte derived not um, light chain amyloid. Well, number one, here you can see the process in action, right? But two other things is number one, when you get, um, I think I said number one already, but in any case, I'm gonna do it again. Number one, when you get um, a light chain amyloid or, or systemic amyloidosis, it's usually around vessels. It's down in the deeper dermis, around vessels and other structures. It's not here in the papillary dermis usually. Whereas the keratin-derived tumor-associated amyloid is packed in the papillary dermis or s directly surrounding the tumor around the basal cell or around the seb. The other thing is that, um, particularly when you've got it right under the epidermis, you can see that in the little crack spaces, there's pigment. And that pigment is melanin because as the keratinocytes break down, the melanin that's also in their cytoplasm falls down into the dermis with it and gets packed and crunched together in between the keratin and protein material that creates the amyloid. So I find that really helpful. And the other time that you see keratin-derived amyloid, of course, is in macular amyloid and um, lichen amyloid, which are two, um, uh, obviously, uh, reactive slash inflammatory dermatoses that have, um, or I guess you'd probably classify them as deposition diseases of, of a sort, but basically they have papillary dermal amyloid that's made of keratin and, and keratinocyte derived proteins, but finding the pigment in those cracks and finding the amyloid right next to the epidermis is the key to recognizing that. And I don't even usually bring it up in my report. I know that you guys are savvy to what this means, but I know that some other uh, physicians may not know about this and they may see the word amyloid and get very concerned that this could be um, something bad and then you know, do a bone marrow biopsy on the patient. And I actually have seen in the past cases where someone called something like an amyloid or macular amyloid, and actually the patient got referred to, to get worked up for systemic amyloidosis. So because of that, I now usually add a comment in my report, especially if it's for a non-dermatologist, this is not associated with systemic amyloid. This is just keratin-derived amyloid, no association at all. Uh, just to avoid any sort of confusion because obviously systemic amyloidosis is such a severe uh, disease and you wouldn't want someone to get worried over something totally benign like this. Okay, nice work.